venture into a TikTok. A few summers ago, uh, while I was interning at NASA, I had the opportunity to go to a town hall meeting with our NASA administrator, Charlie Golden. At this meeting, the organizers decided to toss out big t-shirts into the audience of interns, and my friend happened to get one of them. The downside is that she's an extra small, and this t-shirt was an extra large. So, what do you do with a giant oversized t-shirt that has a sweet NASA logo and a really ugly back? transform it into a TikTok. This project doesn't require any zippers, but it does require both an oversized t-shirt and some extra mesh-like material that complements the t-shirt that you're using. And I highly recommend getting Jersey ballpoint needles. They make this project infinitely easier and you won't be fighting your machine to get stitches in. You also need some newspaper, a favorite tank top that you currently own and fits you well, a pen, paper, uh, tape, general things to make a basic pattern. You don't need pattern making skills necessarily to make this, but they do help. Also, the curved ferrule and French curve rulers also make this project a little bit easier. Make sure that you double check the measurements, otherwise you'll run into an issue like I had, which is where the shirt was too small after I got done with it. So if you're with a t-shirt and not just a regular piece of square material, you can be really smart about the way that you lay your pattern pieces out on the existing shirt. And so for me, I ended up only able to get the front part of it made out of the t-shirt. The biggest problem with this t-shirt is that the NASA logo was off-center, and with the off-center NASA logo, I couldn't exactly get it to stay in on center on her new tank top and still get the whole front part made out of the t-shirt. So I decided to duplicate it. And then I kind of used the back, which had some weird text on it and comic sans MS, as the sort of interior bra shelf lining for the tank top. bunch of binding strips. Technically, you're supposed to cut them out on the bias, which is really the best way to cut binding because it smoothly goes around curves. However, I didn't have a ton of material, so I cut them out crosswise against the grain because I was having a really stretchy material and I didn't want it to stretch too much. So it caused some, I think, some funky sort of fit around some of the circular areas, but like I said, I was working with pretty limited materials. You gotta get creative sometimes. <laughs> when you're folding the bias, you want the bias to be about, um, you need to get four times, and you should add a little eighth of an inch extra, than how wide you want your binding to be on the shirt. That way you can do right sides together, and flip it all the way over, and curve it under, and top stitch it down, so that you can get a nice clean finish on both the inside and the outside of your binding. I did all of my tops to twice in order to get that sort of two needle look. Technically, I think my machine can do um, stitches with two needles, but I didn't have the time to take to really figure it out. If you don't like the top stitching look for your binding, you can definitely hand whip stitch around the inside of it and it will just be a nice smooth front. but you can take a really ugly, wide, big t-shirt that you may have had in your closet for a long time or got a cherry something, and you can transform it into a useful tank top. This last summer, Charlie Bolton came to visit my NASA Center, and I got a super awkward picture with him. It was really funny.